Now, the leaders of the US, Britain and Australia provide Australia with nuclear-powered attack submarines. We're doubling down on information sharing, including on the DPRK's missile launches and cyber activities. The rising tensions between the world's two most powerful countries, the United States and China, after several military close calls. Well, North Korea has conducted what it calls a simulated nuclear strike, launching two ballistic missiles into the Sea of Japan. In the dynamic landscape of global geopolitics, the Asia-Pacific region stands as a focal point of strategic contention and military posturing. With China's ascendance and North Korea's nuclear ambitions, the region grapples with complex security challenges that reverberate across the international stage. Against this backdrop, the Asia-Pacific finds itself embroiled in an evolving arms race, reshaping alliances, and recalibrating the balance of power. In this analysis, we delve into the multifaceted dimensions of the Asia-Pacific arms race, deciphering its underlying drivers and geopolitical implications. In this video, we'll navigate through the intricate web of regional dynamics, seeking insights into the unfolding narrative of strategic competition and the pursuit of stability in a rapidly changing geopolitical landscape. China's formidable military expansion is reshaping the dynamics of power in the Asia-Pacific region, garnering global attention and concern. The recent launch of its third aircraft carrier, the Fujian, equipped with an electromagnetic aircraft launch system, underscores China's commitment to modernizing its naval capabilities. Forecasts suggest a remarkable 40% increase in the total number of ships in the Chinese Navy by 2040, indicating a significant surge in maritime prowess. This expansion is underpinned by China's substantial military budget, which has consistently outpaced its economic growth over the past decade. With ambitions to quadruple its nuclear stockpile by 2030, aiming for a staggering 1,000 warheads, China's strategic priorities are unmistakable. China's assertive foreign policy manifests in various territorial disputes and geopolitical maneuvers across the region. The handling of the COVID-19 pandemic strained relations between China and Australia. When Australia proposed an investigation into the origins of the virus, Australia will continue to, of course, pursue what is a very reasonable and sensible course of action. This is a virus that has taken more than 200,000 lives across the world. Now, it would seem entirely reasonable and sensible that the world would want to have an independent assessment of how this all occurred so we can learn the lessons and prevent it from happening again. China reacted with anger, interpreting the inquiry as a direct affront. China's performance and our contribution has been widely praised by the international community. Any doubts on China's transparency and prevention and control of the epidemic is not in line with the facts. We hope certain people in Australia will do more to improve China-Australia relations, deepen the mutual trust between the two countries. Beijing had been increasingly touchy about allegations linking it to the virus, which originated in Wuhan. China's aggressive behavior and economic created a difficult new phase for Australian diplomacy. Moreover, China's rejection of Australia's inquiry into its handling of the pandemic as unfounded worsened the situation. The pandemic turned into a major point of contention, affecting trade and diplomatic ties between the two nations. In recent years, China has significantly escalated its territorial claims in the South China Sea, a region rich in resources and vital for global trade. Its controversial new 10-dash line extends across the South China Sea, encompassing sovereignty claims over land parcels and adjacent waters. China's aggressive actions, including island building and naval patrols, have strained relations with neighboring countries like Vietnam, the Philippines, and Taiwan. The South China Sea dispute remains a geopolitical flashpoint, impacting trade and diplomatic relations in the region. 
China's recent actions near the Senkaku Diaoyu Islands have escalated tensions with Japan. In 2023, Chinese government vessels made significant incursions into the contiguous zone surrounding the disputed islands, recording an astounding 352 entries out of 365 days, a move challenging Japan's sovereignty over the territory. This contiguous zone, extending 12 to 24 nautical miles from the coast, falls within Japan's territorial waters. Notably, Chinese Coast Guard ships maintained an unbroken presence in the contiguous zone for 134 consecutive days, further asserting Beijing's stance. Under Xi's leadership, China aims to maintain its ships near the Japan-controlled islands for the entirety of 2024, signaling a persistent challenge to Japan's authority in the region. The border between China and India has been a source of tension for quite some time, and recent clashes have only made things worse between the two countries. Since May 2020, there have been some pretty intense face-offs and skirmishes between Chinese and Indian troops along the border. These incidents happened in places like the disputed Pangong Lake in Ladakh, as well as in the Tibet Autonomous Region and along the border between Sikkim and Tibet. Despite attempts to calm things down through diplomacy, tensions haven't eased up much. In recent developments, tensions have escalated in the Taiwan Strait as China flexes its military might. On February 15, 2024, the Taiwanese ministry detected 14 Chinese aircraft, including J-16 fighters and drones, operating off northern and southwestern Taiwan. This was followed by an incident on February 20, 2024, where Taiwan protested China's boarding of a tourist boat, further escalating tensions around the Kinmen Archipelago. Notably, on April 9, 2023, China sent dozens of warplanes towards Taiwan for a second day of military drills, a show of force that came after Taiwanese President Tsai met U.S. House Speaker McCarthy. The friendship between the people of Taiwan and America is a matter of profound importance to the free world. And it is critical to maintain economic freedom, peace, and regional stability. In a discussion with congressional leaders, I reiterated Taiwan's commitment to defending the peaceful status quo. Furthermore, on August 19, 2023, Taiwan reported that 25 Chinese military planes crossed the Taiwan Strait's median line adding to the rising tensions. These actions have significantly increased tensions in the region, with the international community closely monitoring the situation. Moreover, China's militarization efforts in the South China Sea, marked by the fortification of disputed islands with advanced weaponry and surveillance systems, underscore its determination to assert dominance in regional waters. The implications of China's military buildup extend beyond regional boundaries, sparking an arms race and straining economies as nations bolster their defense capabilities. The global balance of military power is in flux as China emerges as a potent challenger to traditional hegemonies. In this landscape of evolving power dynamics, the Asia-Pacific region braces for potential escalation, with the specter of conflict looming amid shifting alliances and geopolitical rivalries. In the Asia-Pacific region, North Korea emerges as a significant player, wielding a formidable military force that reverberates across geopolitical landscapes. Amidst escalating tensions and strategic maneuvers, North Korea's military prowess assumes a pivotal role, reshaping dynamics and eliciting global scrutiny. The utmost significance of legislating nuclear weapons policy is to draw an irreversible line so that there is no bargaining over our nuclear weapons. North Korea's quest for nuclear dominance has been punctuated by a series of assertive actions. Since 2006, the nation has conducted six nuclear tests, highlighting its steadfast commitment to nuclear proliferation. Estimates suggest North Korea harbors a cache of 30 to 40 nuclear warheads, capable of producing six to seven new weapons annually. The regime's proficiency in nuclear weaponry spans the spectrum, with capabilities to fabricate bombs from weapons-grade uranium or plutonium. Projections hint at a trajectory where North Korea could amass as many as 200 nuclear weapons by 2027. Beyond its nuclear endeavors, North Korea's armament extends to a substantial cache of chemical and biological weapons. The inventory includes nerve agents, blister agents, blood agents, and vomiting agents, highlighting the regime's diversified military strategy. 
Recent revelations unveil North Korea's foray into tactical nuclear weaponry, featuring small-scale warheads tailored to short-range missiles. These nuclear warheads are capable of hitting South Korea. This development amplifies concerns surrounding precision strikes and regional destabilization. At the heart of North Korea's military apparatus lies the world's fourth largest military force, comprising over 1.2 million personnel. Anchored in Soviet and Chinese designs, the nation's defense industry augments its conventional prowess. Despite international sanctions and diplomatic endeavors aimed at containment, North Korea's relentless pursuit of military superiority persists presenting a formidable security challenge in the Asia-Pacific theater. The delicate equilibrium of the region hangs in the balance, intricately tied to North Korea's actions and aspirations. The Asia-Pacific region has witnessed a surge in military activity, with countries vying to bolster their defense capabilities. Among the key players, South Korea stands out for its concerted efforts to enhance its military strength. South Korea places significant emphasis on research and development to stay ahead in military technology. Collaborating with global defense companies and universities, it focuses on areas such as cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and advanced weaponry. Additionally, it explores space-based assets for communication, reconnaissance, and navigation. By investing in cutting-edge innovations, South Korea aims to maintain a competitive edge. The South Korean Navy is undergoing a transformation, upgrading its fleet with modern warships and submarines. It aims to enhance maritime surveillance, anti-submarine warfare, and missile defense capabilities. The KDX-3 destroyers and KSS-3 submarines play pivotal roles in this modernization drive. The Republic of Korea Air Force is acquiring advanced fighter jets, including the F-35A Lightning II stealth fighters. Additionally, the ROCAF focuses on unmanned aerial systems and surveillance drones, augmenting its air superiority. Deploying the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense THAAD system, South Korea counters North Korean threats. The country continues to improve its ballistic missile defense capabilities, safeguarding its territory and allies. South Korea collaborates closely with allies such as the United States, Japan, and Australia. Joint exercises, intelligence sharing, and defense dialogues strengthen regional security and foster a collective approach to challenges. The Republic of Korea Air Force are attending pitch black for the first time. Today, Royal Australian Air Force F-35 and the Republic of Korea Air Force F-16s will be conducting a friendship flight to enhance our interoperability and build our partnership. Its strategic investments, technological advancements, and collaborative efforts contribute significantly to its rising military strength in the Asia-Pacific region. Japan, a key player in the Asia-Pacific region, has been actively enhancing its defense capabilities to address the evolving security situation. In December 2022, Japan unveiled its new National Security Strategy, NSS, signaling a significant departure from post-World War II conventions. The strategy mirrors Tokyo's evolving perspectives on defense and security arrangements, emphasizing increased involvement within the U.S.-Japan alliance to enhance overall deterrence capabilities. Japan grapples with a severe and multifaceted strategic landscape, with several key concerns at the forefront. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia exacerbates Japan's apprehensions regarding threats to the Indo-Pacific status quo. Additionally, heightened tensions stem from uncertainty surrounding China's intentions towards Taiwan, which further compounds regional instability. Furthermore, North Korea's ongoing weapons development initiatives serve to accelerate existing concerns, adding to the complexities of Japan's strategic outlook. The new National Security Strategy, NSS, outlines several significant changes in Japan's defense and security approach. First and foremost, Japan plans to double its defense budget over the next five years, reflecting a commitment to bolstering its military capabilities. As part of this enhancement, Japan aims to acquire counter-strike capabilities by purchasing American-made Tomahawk and joint air-to-surface standoff missiles. Additionally, the strategy emphasizes the importance of enhancing capabilities in new domains 
efforts, particularly in space. To streamline operations and improve coordination, Japan intends to establish a permanent joint headquarters for unified command over its armed services. Furthermore, the NSS prioritizes strategic focus on the Southwest Islands, recognizing their vulnerability in the event of a Taiwan contingency. Finally, the strategy underscores the importance of warfighting sustainability and resilience, aiming to strengthen Japan's ability to sustain military efforts over time. These changes reflect Japan's proactive stance in adapting to evolving security challenges and safeguarding its national interests. Japan is actively enhancing its standoff capability to address threats within its sea and airspace domains. This will enhance Japan's capacity to protect its archipelago. This strategic development underscores Japan's proactive approach in defense matters, reaffirming its dedication to promoting regional stability and security within the Asia-Pacific region. As Taiwan faces increasing security challenges in the Asia-Pacific region, it has been actively bolstering its defense capabilities. Here are key measures taken by Taiwan to enhance its military strength. Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen announced in December 2022 to extend the compulsory conscription program for men born after 2005. Under the new plan, the previous four-month mandatory service period was extended to a year starting from 2024. <laughs> This initiative is a key component of Taiwan's fresh force realignment plan, which aims to augment its reserve personnel while enhancing its overall military readiness. Taiwan maintains an active military force of around 169,000 personnel, complemented by a significant reserve contingent of approximately 1.66 million individuals. In 2023, the national defense budget was elevated to over 500 billion Taiwanese dollars, translating to roughly 19 billion U.S. dollars, marking a substantial increase of nearly 15 percent compared to allocations from the previous year. These enhanced funds were specifically earmarked for the improvement and modernization of air and naval combat systems. In response to the widening disparity between its military forces and China's formidable strength, Taiwan persists in cultivating asymmetrical defense capabilities. Recognizing the People's Liberation Army PLA, of China as its most significant threat, Taiwan remains vigilant amidst the PLA's ongoing modernization endeavors, despite its opaque nature. In pursuit of self-reliance and bolstered defense, Taiwan endeavors to domestically manufacture advanced defense and military equipment, a strategic move aimed at enhancing Enhancing its defensive capabilities amid regional security challenges. Taiwan's robust indigenous development program and its imports of anti-ship missiles from the United States reflect its unique security situation. Taiwan is also investing in long-range strike capability to counter China. The Philippines, situated at the crossroads of maritime routes and territorial disputes, has been actively enhancing its military capabilities. The Philippines faces a unique set of challenges. Its strategic location in the South China Sea places it at the center of territorial disputes involving China, Taiwan, Vietnam, and Malaysia. The contested waters are rich in resources, and sovereignty claims over islands and reefs have escalated tensions. In this context, the Philippines is keenly aware of the need to bolster its defense capabilities. The Philippines has recently made significant advancements in bolstering its military capabilities through strategic arms acquisitions. Among the notable developments is the acquisition of the BrahMos supersonic missile system, marking the Philippines as the first foreign nation to possess this potent Indian-Russian anti-ship missile. This acquisition significantly enhances the Philippine Navy's capacity to defend its sovereign claims in the South China Sea. The BrahMos, renowned as the world's fastest supersonic cruise missile, boasts versatility as it can be launched from submarines, ships, aircraft, or land platforms. With a speed nearly three times that of sound, it renders targets nearly impossible to evade 
providing a groundbreaking deterrent against potential incursions by China's maritime militia and Coast Guard vessels. Moreover, the Philippines has historically relied on the United States as a principal arms supplier, with arms sales totaling nearly $900 million since 2002 and over $1.3 billion in security assistance. Additionally, the Philippines has fostered a close military alliance with Israel, procuring millions of dollars worth of arms since 2018. While the overall defense budget may not have skyrocketed, the Philippines is strategically reallocating funds. Targeted investments in critical military hardware, such as BrahMos missiles and warships, demonstrate a focused approach. The goal is to maximize impact within existing budget constraints. Australia has unveiled a significant expansion plan for its Navy, marking the largest fleet expansion since World War II. The announcement entails doubling the country's warship count from 11 to 26 major vessels. This expansion encompasses a diverse range of vessel types, including three Hobart-class air warfare destroyers, six Hunter-class frigates, 11 general-purpose frigates, and six large optionally crewed surface vessels. The expansion plan is part of a long-term strategy with a substantial budget allocation of $7.2 billion earmarked solely for surface vessels. The total budget for the entire naval upgrade over the next decade amounts to $13.5 billion. Such a considerable investment underscores the seriousness with which Australia views its naval capabilities and security needs. Australia's partnership with the UK and the US, known as AUKUS, plays a pivotal role in the naval upgrade plan. Under this partnership, Australia aims to acquire at least three Virginia-class submarines from the US and build five SSN-type submarines domestically. These nuclear submarines are expected to significantly enhance Australia's naval capabilities and strategic deterrence. The primary motivation behind this ambitious naval upgrade is multifaceted. Australia seeks to bolster regional diplomacy, deter potential threats, and safeguard its national interests. Of particular concern is China's growing naval presence and ambitions in the Pacific region. The upgrade is seen as crucial for securing vital trade routes and defending against potential adversities. China's expanding naval capabilities and assertive behavior have prompted Australia to reevaluate its defense posture. While Australia's 26 warships alone may not pose a significant deterrent to China's vast naval forces, collaboration with allies such as the US and the UK enhances its ability to counter Beijing's aggressive maneuvers in the region. AUKUS agreement we confirm here in San Diego represents the biggest single investment in Australia's defence capability in all of our history. Joe, Anthony, we represent three allies who have stood shoulder to shoulder together for more than a century. Three peoples who have shed blood together in defence of our shared values. As such, Australia's naval expansion is both a response to emerging security challenges and a proactive measure to maintain regional stability and security. For 75 years, the United States has maintained a robust defense presence in the Asia Pacific, playing a pivotal role in fostering regional peace, security, stability, and prosperity. Serving as a stabilizing force, the United States has effectively deterred aggression against its allies and partners, contributing significantly to the overall stability of the region. The Indo-Pacific strategy outlines the U.S. commitment to the region, focusing on several key areas. Firstly, the strategy emphasizes the reinforcement of existing alliances, such as those with Japan, South Korea, and Australia while also fostering new partnerships to bolster regional stability and security. Additionally, the strategy prioritizes security cooperation by enhancing military interoperability, conducting joint exercises, and investing in capacity-building efforts to address emerging threats effectively. Economically, the Indo-Pacific strategy advocates for the promotion of free and open trade, as well as increased investment and in infrastructure development to foster sustainable economic growth and prosperity across the region. In response to China's ascendance, there is a concerted effort to counter its burgeoning influence and assertive actions across multiple fronts. China's swift military modernization efforts and assertive conduct have sparked apprehensions globally. The United States perceives China's expanding military capabilities, territorial assertions, and maritime expansion as significant challenges to regional stability and security. Consequently, a strategic competition has emerged between the United States and China encompassing various domains, including the economic, technological, and military spheres. 
The dynamics of the arms race have been significantly influenced by the collapse of the INF Treaty in 2019. This enabled the United States to contemplate the deployment of INF range missiles in the Asia Pacific region as a strategic response to China's growing capabilities. In this context, the United States seeks to uphold credible deterrence while simultaneously endeavoring to prevent the escalation of an uncontrolled arms race. To this end, investments in nuclear weapons, hypersonic missiles, and the enhancement of maritime time dominance form integral components of the broader strategic approach. The U.S. presence in the Indo-Pacific reassures allies, acting as a counterbalance in maintaining stability with forward deployed Navy forces. AUKUS strengthens resolve among Australia, the U.K., and the U.S. to uphold stability and deter aggression in the Indo-Pacific, countering regional challenges, particularly from China. The Quad fosters cooperation among the U.S., Japan, India, and Australia, emphasizing shared values and interests in regional stability, economic prosperity, and maritime security in the Indo-Pacific. Pacific. The Asia-Pacific region, characterized by its diversity in cultures, economies, and strategic interests, finds itself embroiled in a hotbed of military competition with implications that reverberate across the globe. China's rapid military expansion, particularly evident in its Navy, Air Force, and missile forces, has raised alarms despite Beijing's assertions of peaceful intentions, notably in the contentious South China Sea disputes. The United States, a long-standing Pacific power, views China's ascent with a blend of caution and concern, leading to a multifaceted strategic competition spanning economic, technological, and military spheres. This rivalry has seen both nations investing heavily in modernizing their nuclear arsenals, fueled further by the collapse of the INF Treaty, potentially allowing the deployment of previously prohibited missiles in the region. Other countries in the Asia-Pacific, including Japan, South Korea, and Australia, are not idle bystanders in this evolving landscape. They are bolstering their defense capabilities, engaging in investments in missile systems, naval fleets, and cyber warfare capabilities as part of the regional arms race. However, they tread a thin line between deterrence and de-escalation, mindful of the paramount importance of preventing miscalculations and unintended conflict. The delicate balance in the region is further maintained by the U.S. presence, which reassures allies and acts as a counterweight to China. Nonetheless, maintaining stability without succumbing to confrontation remains a precarious task, with the looming specter of accidental escalation. Beyond mere hardware and numbers, the Asia-Pacific arms race embodies geopolitical maneuvering, national pride, and historical grievances. Diplomacy, crisis management, and a steadfast commitment to peace are indispensable in navigating this volatile terrain with the world closely monitoring developments in the region. Seeking a peaceful resolution amidst this escalating tension is paramount. Multilateral diplomacy and dialogue, arms control agreements tailored to the region, strengthened nuclear non-proliferation efforts, and the promotion of strategic restraint among powers all offer potential avenues towards stability and peace. Drawing from historical precedents, such as the Cold War, where strategic restraint and diplomatic negotiations averted catastrophic conflict, the Asia-Pacific region can learn valuable lessons in crisis management and communication. Through dialogue, cooperation, and a shared commitment to regional security, a peaceful resolution to the Asia-Pacific arms race is within reach, albeit through a narrow and challenging path. As the world watches, the hope for wisdom and restraint to prevail remains steadfast, 